Today we're gonna learn how to make a tone in the axe effects. Woo! Hey everyone, today we're going to look at building a pretty sweet distortion tone uh, in our Axe Effects here. I got my V already, and as you can see on your screen, this is Axe Edit, the editing software for the Axe Effects. The actual unit looks like this, and you can edit on the screen of it, but this is much easier and much prettier, so we're going to do that. So, uh, if you haven't ever done this before, I'm going to try and show you how I build a tone and uh, what I might uh, do to fix problems and things like that for things I don't like about the amps and stuff that you pick. Uh, so first thing you need to do is build a through line from the input to the output. And to do that, you kind of click this little plus sign here and go all the way to the end. So now you're going to hear a DI tone. And so that's just the pickup sound with no amp or anything, obviously. Uh, also, don't forget to save if you do something you like. Save your tone. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is actually turn on the input gate because if I don't turn this on, and I'm just a little bit too, you don't want to gate this super hard. This is just to get rid of crazy hissy sounds uh, when you have a gainy patch like this. So when you pick an amp here, I like to uh, go to a few favorites uh, rather than go through all of these options here, which are all awesome and can all be used for different applications. Uh, I'm going to use the Brit 800 Modern here, which I believe is a model of a uh, Marshall 800. Um, and I also like the Brit Pre. The, these are pretty sweet. Uh, Friedman's can't go wrong here with those models. Um, there's several good ones, but I tend to, for gain patches, go between these and those, and maybe also the Herbies here. Um, so I have the amp here, and then I pick my cab, so that we get a sound that doesn't sound awful here. Without the amp, it's going to sound horrendous. Um, and the same thing here, I have a few go-tos, uh, so that I don't waste time just trying to go through every one. This is what it sounds, just amp into cabinet. And that's uh, not so bad already. We're some stuff to fix, but it's a, a good starting place. See, if I need to find a better cab that I uh, think might work better with the amp, I'll just kind of strum. And I'll just go through like this until I have something that s sits kind of well for the tone that I'm going for. That's okay, but a little too high focus. That's okay, but a little muddy. It's a little uh, low midi also. So anyway, that's how I would do that to find uh, some better cabinets. But I like this one. And also something you can do here in the cabinets section is to uh, do a stereo uh, version where you're actually miking or using uh, two cabinets. So you want to turn the link off to do two different cabinets, otherwise these will kind of follow each other. Another cabinet I like is this, uh, this one based on the Orange Company. And so those together uh, are pretty good for this amp, for a good uh, rock metal patch. Uh, but how can we make this better already? Because as you can hear, just the amp and cab is good. There's a little sizzly on the top I'd want to get rid of and a little too much lows. So how can we make this a little more snappy, first of all? I'm going to add a compressor. Now, you don't want to squash this with too fast of an attack because if I do that I'm going to cut off the actual pick attack of me playing a chord or a note. If I do this like that, turn the ratio up and the threshold up high, it's not going to sound awful but it's going to sound very very flat across the whole time that I'm p from when I pick into when I hold out the note. Uh, and I don't want that. I want it to really be snappy. And the way you get that is to have a later attack where you pick and then the milliseconds later squashes that tail of what you play on guitar. So I'm going to uh, go attack to probably between 10 and 20 milliseconds. That's not bad. 
I'd probably go a little shorter on that. Release 100 is pretty good. I'll leave it, leave it whatever there. And ratio, it doesn't have to, if the more you do this, the crazier the compression will be. So you'd want your ratio to be down here a little bit. You don't want your threshold to be uber high. You usually go here. Bees or so. That sounds a little bit better. And that gives us a little bit more snap and also evenness in our tone. And like we said before, if I didn't have this input gate on, if I turn this off, you can hear this just slight fuzz. So if you're going to use this as a live patch, this is going to uh, translate into feedback or uh, just loud fuzz when you're uh, with your stage volume. So to get rid of that, you just turn this on a little bit so it's super clean and it's not going to cut off your, your playing at all. It's just going to keep when you're not wanting to play quiet. Let's look at the amp, play with the controls here a little bit. Use a little less bass. bright I'm hearing a little bit of uh, kind of shrillness on the top there better. maybe a little bit more mid I like a little bit of mid in my patches uh, I like to turn the cut on always cut up to about 63 Hertz or whatever um, around 60 because that is the lowest note low E 63 Hertz so cut up to that uh don't want to cut too much on the highs but you know it kind of defaults to 10 here i like to cut around maybe 1200 because the highs is what really gives the tone its uh character so in the i like to cut some stuff in the uh graphic eq and that is usually in the low mids here Kind of get a weird sound with the 250 there, low mids. Around 300 is your mud range. You don't want too much of that. So we're going to cut just a little bit of that. That's too much. Yeah, that's probably good there. Uh, and I'm uh, getting a little bit too much low here. So I'm just going to cut down the lowest there to make it a little tighter. Uh, another thing we don't want in a tone is too much 2 and 4K. Those are your very kind of glassy, broken glass on your ears frequencies. Uh, those don't help you a lot, uh, especially when uh, recording and mixing. So, as you can see there, we're kind of getting where that weird uh, uh, like you hear it in isolation it just makes you want to uh, do that so we're going to cut that just a little bit if you cut it too much you get a really kind of muffled sound and again you want some of the highs in your tone because that's kind of the the character of a distorted tone that's what it sounds like way too cut way 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 too cut but you want to cut out a little bit that shrillness I guess 72 is good. Let's check the 2K. That's a little less obnoxious, but still gonna cut a little bit of it anyway. We're gonna EQ this on the way out as well. So that's usually the most of what I do. If I have a patch that's way too bright, I might uh, play around in the speaker here, bring down the high resonance a little bit of this curve. Uh, this one is totally fine. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And also if there were too many lows, I might bring down this resonance here. Uh, but again, that and maybe, you know, bring up some presence here, uh, change whatever the character frequency is. If uh, it's not cutting enough, might do that. Uh, I don't generally play with too many of these things. Maybe it's a really genty, like I need a tight patch. I might play a little bit without comp, but very little. Uh, and, you know, uh, might go fishing if there's a problem that I need to fix. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but that's generally all I would do here. I'm not going to play with the saturation here too much. Uh, don't really play with the boost because we get enough drive here. You can also use more drive there. Don't want too much because then 
yeah. your uh, the cleanness of your playing can get lost. Uh, and then check out the cabs. So as I already said, these are cabs that I like. They sound good to me. A thing I love to do is uh, play with the miking here. So as you can see, it says none here. There's no mic um, impulse response on these cabinets. Um, but I find that you can get a little bit of a better color if you play with these a little bit. Uh, so we got a bunch of really great mics here uh, that you don't have to own to get a guitar sound uh, using them. Uh, SM57, 58, uh, those are standard. 67 condenser, 87A condenser. Uh, 421, which is uh, obviously uh, the drum mic for toms, is frequently used. Uh, E609 is a great guitar mic. This is a kick drum mic, D112. Uh, ribbon 121. I like that when I need a little bit more mellowness, and I find that that is a good one on this kind of patch sometimes. Now if I change that, if I change that back to uh, none on both of them, you see it's a little bit more focused in the lows now. But if I turn these back on, that sounds a little bit tighter to me, a little cleaner, not too focused in too many areas. And uh, I think it would just fit in the mix of a band better uh, when you're playing a riff or anything like that. Uh, you can also play with these a little bit like I did with the cabinets and also how I would do with the amps. Where kind of scroll through and find uh, if one of them's not working which one might work better that's way too high uh, high centered adds too much uh, of those like two 4k areas that one's not bad but it's, it has some more highs around I think like six or seven ish in there that doesn't sound great I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna stick with that ribbon like that. Um, you can also play with the proximities here. Uh, it adds more low end. Uh, I believe uh, brings the mic uh, farther away from the speaker and plays with the positioning of the mic. See how it kind of brings in some lows. Play with those. I like to get a little bit of that because you don't want it to sound really, really dead and uh, lack of room sounding because then it's going to sound more artificial. That sounds pretty good. Last few things I'll do, I'll do a filter to make sure there's no extra lows that were conjured up in the tone there. Do a high pass. We're going to do that again to the same area, about 60, because that's the lowest note on guitar. And we're going to leave it just kind of stock like that. You can play with the cue if you want, but you don't want too much resonance down here, because again, you're going to get some weird muffly sounds below 60 at this point. So you don't really want a resonance there. And then if you bring the cue too much down, you're going to be cutting too much low end. So whatever it was at roughly there, that's good. And then I'll uh, always do parametric EQ on something. So, like I said, uh, you don't want too much uh, 300, between 2 and 300 low mids. Those are your mud frequencies. Um, so we're going to seek out if there's anything weird like that in our tone here. We're going to boost it. Oh, we're going to turn this to peaking. And we're going to look for weird resonances in the low mids. <laughs> boxy noises kind of between 270 280 here so kind of go in the middle of those or whatever and just cut a little you don't again you can't cut like this much because then it's going to start sounding thin you need some lows you can't destroy the whole low end of the patch but see that is tighter then without that cut. Again, these start to be subtle moves at this point after you've kind of dialed in the amp and cabinet setup. But these uh, little moves add up to uh, a great 
difference in the end that you would notice if you turned all of these afterthoughts or after uh, tone things off. Uh, and then we're going to just uh, clean up the top end here. So again, we're going to start with, I like to look between 4 and 5K, uh, look for those really nasty uh, glassy frequencies. <laughs> That sticks out more than the uh, 4.7K. Uh, um, and whichever one kind of really jumps out at you when you're doing this, cut those. We're going to widen it to get a little bit more of the above and below because uh, around that whole area, it's uh, it can all be a little dicey. Cut too much, though. Cool, and uh, then we're going to look at some 2K as well. Let's do this one. Uh, see if there's anything nasty there. Yeah, that doesn't sound great. So let's cut some of that 2.7. By roughly the same. Sounds good. Go for a narrow one here. That sounds pretty good. I guess the last thing I would do is uh, add a volume pedal. And uh, I like to have that to be able to do swells and stuff. And I should uh, link it. So I have this uh, plugged into one of the, uh, the uh, pedal inputs there. And that's all. that's all I have to do. I have a volume pedal behind the scenes here, if you're uh, wondering how I'm doing that. It's a uh, Mission Engineering, uh, I think it's an SP-1. And uh, certain volume pedals will work better uh, with uh, an Axe FX and other units too. Um, some uh, companies volume pedals and uh, you know MIDI control things don't like to play nice together for some reason. Um, so keep that in mind and definitely double check before you buy a certain pedal for any Axe FX model or Kemper model or whatever. Um, but so now we have our volume pedal. Important, uh, do not put your volume pedal before the compressor. I don't care what you say, if you say that it should be the opposite of that, you don't know what you're talking about. Because, watch, if I swap these, now my line that is getting faded in if I want to do a volume swell with my volume pedal here, it's getting compressed here, and there will be no swell. You'll hear a really, really quick uh, ascent in volume, like this. It's not much of a swell, whereas if I switch this, I can get more of a gradual increase into the tone like that. Uh, so make sure you have that combination. Even if you're using real pedals, real amps, uh, and not an Axe FX, uh, that's what you want to do. Compressor always goes first. I would also actually, uh, I shouldn't say last thing, I would add a reverb. Uh, and I like to do it kind of in parallel like this and not just on top of the tone, uh, just to put the guitar in a space. Uh, and you don't want a super long space. Maybe like if it's a really spacey patch you're trying to make, uh, then you can absolutely make it a longer reverb. But we're just going to go studio here. Um, re reverb time, two-ish seconds maybe, maybe a little less than that. i got to connect it here. So you should be able to hear that. It did get louder in volume, though. Uh, I like to usually bring these down by 13 dB. That's about what it adds in volume. So if you turn it off, you should be aware of that because the volume and uh, the level of your patch can change uh, in ways that you don't want them to. Um, but so I would add the reverb just like that, just to give it a little bit of uh, room sound. You 
should be able to hear a difference there. See if I turn this off. <laughs> It's very, very dry. Just a little bit of this, maybe a little bit more mix. Just so it sounds like it was recorded in a studio, in a real space. Um, so that's important too. Uh, and there, now you have a good uh, rock tone. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you have not done that already. And also, please consider becoming a patron at my Patreon. I have lots of behind the scenes content there of making these videos and also other projects I'm working on. And I might also consider uploading some behind the scenes sound struggle content if you're a fan of that work that I've done outside of this channel. Uh, until then, go out and make some heavy stuff.